recording. Bienvenidos a un, un poco de podcast. Eh, si habéis visto mi vídeo de los monsterfuckerismos, pues habéis visto un poco de esta sección. Eh, y esto va a ser todo en inglés. Solo lo estoy introduciendo en castellano. No va a venir subtitulado, ya lo siento, pero no me voy a poner a subtitular todo esto. Mira la cámara, hijo de puta. Eh, aquí, aquí estamos con John. Y... Eh, y vamos a hablar de, 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 de tratofilia, monsterfuquerismo y, y otras cosas sanas y saludables. Ok, so now I can go into English. Now every, everyone's been warned. This is in English. Uh, we'll speak in English all the way through. So, so yes. Uh, so are you a pervert, Jonathan? Yes. So am I. Unequivocally, yes. Yes, that's great. So, so that that is the whole point of this conversation. To answer the question, honestly, I had to ask myself, what kind of person would label someone a pervert? What kind of demographic? They would absolutely label me a pervert because I am not heteronormative and I am willing to question my own social scripting, which makes me... Uh, progressive, which further perverts me on multiple levels. Of course, because you you live in in like in like the United States, like like nearby the nearby the religious part. You're not in the in the Jesus Belt anymore. The I don't, I don't know. Religious part, I think. It's all the religious part. Oh, but <laughs> you know, you know the Jesus Belt. What what you would call the Jesus Belt? Oh yeah, the the Bible Belt. Uh, the Bible Belt. That that's the well. Thing. It, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, there are a lot of Catholics. Okay, well, could be worse, I guess. Could be, that's you correct. know, there's worse Where than I Catholic. Was worse. <laughs> and I used to go to the same Christian school as Marilyn Manson. Oh. So, yeah. All that baggage aside, I think he and I had uh, similar ways we felt about the church as we developed. Mm, probably yes. Oh, so uh, and this is, uh -huh. but that's also related to monster fuckery and this idea of being perceived as the other in society. If you're in a position, for example, where you aren't allowed to be open about your tastes or maybe your inclinations of your sexuality would put you in a dangerous position if you shared it not only do you have to hide your sexuality but there will be layers between even what you are comfortable consuming consuming privately to consummate what you're into so that's a little abstract let's get to specifics here if you are For example, taught that porn is evil because all women in porn are objectified and they are manipulated. A person who is perceived male and straight may go, oh no, not the women. I need to protect them. I shouldn't consume porn with women in it. That wasn't just an example. So in being attracted to monsters in media, What I'm doing since a very long time ago is at the very start coming from a place where certain things aren't allowed. And this, of course, would not be the intention of a church leader or a conservative Christian parent. I'm sure that my, my parents did not want me to be sexually attracted to the asset in the shape of water. However, with time, that's a completely natural consequence of the society that I was raised in. Okay. I was I wasn't raised in the same society. Mine was different. <laughs> Although, yeah, Christian parents, um, not as Christian as yours, but Catholic family, and well, we could say the 90s were just a bit shit. In general, you know, Some, some good things Did about them, the like panic yeah, uh, yeah, a bit, but not, not, not like 
not like in uh, not like in the United States. We had a, a just one very famous crime where uh, they decided, you know, some sort of cult was involved, even though there was never any evidence. Blah 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 blah. But it it quite never got called satanic. And uh, or or maybe yeah, I don't remember. Maybe we had a satanic panic. I not like in the United States. That's for certain. Metal bands were not being chased around being blamed about kids killing themselves or things like that. That did not happen. Not that I remember. But uh, but I was I was always you know, I I went to the church. I I was forced to go to the church because I did not enjoy it. But then again I was a child so I I did not have much of a choice. I just had to go with my mummy. And uh, there was all this Imaginary, image, 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 images, icons, the sort of things Protestants don't like, and a couple of them were were pretty gay. Uh, it's a you know mm, this church. It's uh, I I'm, I'm not going to say where it is. It that triangulated my position, but it's it was uh, built in the Middle Ages, and the icons were from the 19th century. And one of them was showing uh, uh, Saint, Saint Sebastian, you know, uh, tied to a tree, you know, all looking like a, the, the, the super twinky saint. And there was another one with a, with a, you know, a saint. I think, I think it was probably Angel Michael, uh, like vanquishing a demon. And I was just looking at the demon and looking at Saint Sebastian and, and being a child and thinking, well, you know, according to Freud, it's not my time yet, but I am looking at these pictures now, uh, so I must be really gay. I, I did not think like that. I was seven years old. But, you know, unretrospective. Uh, so, yeah, there was that. There was a whole uh, projection of the devil as temptation. And the devil is often portrayed as a sort of beastly, supposedly intimidating, horrifying creature. Thing is, what some people might consider intimidating, some gay men consider really fucking hot. <laughs> That's the thing with, oh uh, yeah. So if yeah, yeah. About if we're talking about the institution of religion and how that can inform sexuality, specifically my flavor of Christianity I grew up in, in general, it's very easy to find a furry artist or anyone into teratophilia, the, the $10 word for monster fucking. Yes, I prefer that because furry is like the, the vanilla. Oh, oh, yes, you like cute bunnies. Oh, let me show you the xenomorph. Uh. Yeah, that's the cuteness I can't interface with all that well. And I think it's because with cuteness, there's this implicit idea of innocence that I don't relate to either. Yeah. And if it's not innocent, then it will be some reaction, like a 4chan type of image where I'm cute, but I'm covered in blood. Or if Deadpool wasn't ever funny, that's kind of how it feels to look at that stuff. But back to religious imagery. If you are looking at the idea of Lucifer, the fallen angel who was also supposed to be the most beautiful and prized creation that God had at the time, there's something really interesting to that. You have Lucifer and then somewhere along the line, there's a, there is a shift to the devil. And we have this fuzzy expectation that these are the same figure, but they're certainly separate images. The the devil as the devil and Lucifer, Lucifer as both uh, elements of temptation, but one is beautiful, and then you can have art that's especially in the 1300s and 1400s that has to take the devil and make sure everyone knows. Don't think this is too cool and sexy. It's really bad to sin. And yeah, so we're going to make it a goat man with wings. Nobody wants to fuck a goat man with wings, right? I'm not ne into wings. Never happened. 
well, wings, whatever, uh, whatever you know, they put in. Satyrs are attracted, or you, it could have. I mean, they're like if it's a harmonious Bosch esque image where there's a butterfly and the sphincter is just like a surprised mouth on a butterfly face. Yes. Thing, then it's just, it looks so comical because it, you're supposed to go, that's not like a normal person and you're supposed to clutch your pearls. And I don't know many people into this image of the devil, but the devil as, as he exists in pop culture fulfills a different role. And because of our relationship to monster and otherness as queer people, and this is especially true for certain trans populations, they are more likely to latch onto that and if I can take it to another space, they're more likely to want to rescue the dragon than rescue the princess in Western mythology. Rescue and then fuck the dragon. There are reasons for this. What are the reasons? What do you think are the reasons? Like, okay, maybe we were because born into into religious families and and we rose up in this in this sort of like like identification of sin and temptation with with like you know do not wank because god is watching you while you're wanking and you wouldn't like that um but i i'm sure it doesn't apply to everyone no this this is for the people either curious or who already understand and haven't necessarily had it articulated if you have saint sebastian and he is tied twinkly to the stake and he's like Oh, I'm being penetrated by an arrow, but this is for you, God. And yes. See, I feel it's been all worthwhile. <laughs> this, this idea of the penetration or someone experiencing spiritual ecstasy, they're, be, they're coming for the Lord, literally and figuratively. And this idea is uh, like when you have a solo character, there are some mixed signals that happen here. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be um, sensual, and I don't mean sexual, I mean sensory. You're supposed to have a strong sensation. There's an overlap. And when you're having these stories of romance and you don't have anything that you can project your experiences onto uh, if you're not heteronormative, what's left over? It's saying, okay, well, I'm not like this. Where can I look? I could look at solo characters. I could. I could feel bad for Lucifer if I think he he still deserves love and compassion. It's actually pretty easy to to go outside of heteronormativity from this lens view what we're raised in in religious contexts and then see how this could correlate with teratophilia just developing naturally. Mhm. Mm which I guess is what brings us to the furry fandom and why you brought me here, or I guess how we even met at all. Act so, actually, I think we met my... about teratophilia, because I read that long oh, yeah? Patreon post that you did about monster wanking to monsters, and I thought, well, this is a very interesting story. Wanking to monsters. Yeah, you did it. Specifically teratophilia. Well, you did it very long post. I don't remember the title of it. That might have been purpose-driven porn, or it could have been what should professional artists do with their weird fetishes, or any... That's the one. That's the one. Oh, now you're getting the motorbike, not me. Have... This is change. We... Yeah, we have many, many people here with cool cars and giant penises, and they like to let us know. Okay. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, it's alright. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm, I'm constantly in my artwork and my writing trying to deconstruct what what sexual repression what sexual repression means for for me personally and really what I try and do is I go back in time to 15 or 20 years ago or more and I ask myself what do I wish that I knew back then mm -hmm. what would have just made my life so much easier and that's the kind of work I produce and there's no shortage of of opportunities for me to do this because I had a lot of repression. Yeah, so did I. Um, so, in your experience, how many people that like end up, you know, not being the warrior, not being the princess, but actually preferring the dragon? 
in your experience, how much of it does it relate to a a a history of of sexual repression? Because in my experience, We're quite a lot. <laughs> like everyone I know that that is into this is queer. Like almost everyone. I I I I know a couple of like straight cis dudes, but like literally a couple, literally two. So, so it makes me wonder. I think of how my mother and father were raised as boomers and how they came from parents that were alive during World War II. My other grandfather on my other side was in the Korean War. And a lot of being, especially American, no more than three generations ago, was about losing your heritage. My grandfather was first generation Italian and he had an accent while his slightly younger brother did not. And his brother, I never realized this until now, but my, it probably correlates with in part why his brother skewed more white collar with his career. My grandfather was a fabricator. He sounded very Italian. Uh huh. You are ideally as a child 70 years ago, 80, 90 years ago, you aren't supposed to sound anything more than American. And in some cases, if you loved your children, you wouldn't even use the language of your homeland around them. So that that fight for stability bleeds into the, the life that my parents had, because that's, that's not the time to question what society wants of you and what your gender roles are. That's the time for you in this generation is to provide and especially to be the strong silent provider that role is valued. So this does, I hope you're all wondering if, you're, if your parents and grandparents were on the internet now, if they would eventually masturbate to imagery of monsters because I'm stuck with that thought and now I want you to be stuck with it too. Good. Every, everyone's like, everyone likes to imagine their parents masturbating to monster porn. That is a, I showed my mother the, the, the dildos in, in Bat Dragon. She thought it was very amusing. So there's that. Yeah, she said it. She sounds like a cool mom. Yeah, yeah, the, pretty much. She, all, she, she thought it was yeah, all funny. The, all, this say, all, all this all this to say, if, if you are a parent that came from a certain place, you don't get to ask certain questions. And my mom was actually punished for, for expressing curiosity when she was younger. Mm -hmm. It was not physically beat out of her, but certainly emotionally beat out of her. I do wonder, as a non-American, did, didn't you have like a big subcultural super cool thing like the boomer generation didn't they get to like live the 60s and 70s and question everything and and destroy the status quo how how is this the same generation that did that i mean where where, where have all they all gone i think they're all just probably either depressed you know depressed hippies or just you know people who abandoned their dreams and just are not depressed anymore they 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 just don't don't believe in whatever they ha they held back on the day you know i do wonder where all the cool people went well a lot of them died of aids oh yes true and 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 so and, and some that, were killed by the important. fbi and for and being too cool yes for Which being is mccarthyism too it's 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 persecuting people for being too cool. Yes, absolutely. And uh and I I do wonder where the last you know whatever progressive boomers are meant to be hiding, you know, aside from Roger Waters who's like always doing shit, like he's <laughs> he's, he's the only one left. He's there like ah. <laughs> In I, the, you know, I wrote United the States. wall. <laughs> I don't like fascists. In the United States, if you were not relying on a union in the 80s and you weren't completely disappointed by that, you probably found a stable role in society if you were just getting to coast in the middle class and you got to reap the benefits of things still being affordably priced. 
at least this is in my limited understanding i'm not an economist yes i'm a furry artist however uh if i may if i may speculate here there is a classist divide that will drive people to avoid something progressive and when you have children and you need to prioritize stability over anything else and especially because of our model of suburban living that is just like unparalleled for what we have in america designed to separate people your standard of normalcy becomes part of a commute where as many as i believe 80 percent of americans have to drive at least 20 minutes to work mm -hmm. and some far longer you have a lower standard of health correlating with longer drives you are separate from neighbors you don't get to build up a sense of community your life becomes entirely focused around what happens in your household and that's it you okay. don't get to be informed by outside you don't even get the internet so any any experiences you had several decades ago that were really exciting and were people say comfortably experimenting with things like lsd uh that has to be viewed as a distraction from what you're supposed to do now if you're not going to kill yourself and if you're going to raise a family that's how i view it as someone from the outside oh yeah well that could very well be an explanation um but you know we will never find out we should probably ask the boomers about it but they're going probably just going to probably just draw a really shitty cartoon about father i cannot click the book because uh because that's that's what boomers do on the internet now um is it, david, is it david hoffman who's the documentarian yes so david hoffman has quite a few documentaries that are that are relevant to this like trying to have a boomer explain themselves but in the 80s so there are a lot of answers there i'm sure waiting for both of us and it makes me wish i i knew this was coming up so i could i could take a deep dive into his youtube channel no because I, I recommend that because we're talking about monster fuckery not about the boom i, I i'm just getting sidetracked but it happens because we're friends and i'm not being professional here but since oh, you know no, i will not. upload this like full with all all the silly things and then i'll just cut off a, a few you know cool bits that that make us look like we're having a coherent conversation so you were yeah, going to say something i'm here listening yeah so so you were going to say something about the furry fandom in relationship to 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 the wider thing of teratophilia i just uh yes. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's just a small part, but it's the most popular one, which sort of makes sense because the more terrifying it gets, <laughs> the more people are are scared by it. Maybe it depends on the people. You asked me earlier how many people I felt would be sexually repressed if they were into rescuing the dragon, not the princess. There's another layer here as it relates to whether something is furry or furry adjacent. So. If you want to fuck a dragon, or if you're a dragon fucking a car, perhaps you've seen this. Oh, yeah. If you're yeah, in of course. Fan, if you're in the Quetzal fandom, you've definitely seen dragons fucking cars by now. We I, all love I, dragons I, fucking yeah. cars. It's so funny. So this, this idea here, what's really important to remember is some people don't want to be the dragon in that scenario. They want to be the human rescuing the dragon. Some yes. people want to be a dragon that a human... Or, yeah, some people want to be a dragon. Some people want to be a human rescuing a dragon or being rescued by a dragon. Some, sometimes people who's... want to be cars, I guess. I just want to be that car. I'm sure, yes. <laughs> we have jet sonas. I'm, I haven't seen many car sonas, but I don't see why there would be. <laughs> well, it's a bit and... far-fetched, but it could happen. I'm all for it. You know, whatever, whatever rolls your thingy. With hyperfixation and and how that's going to relate to being on the autism spectrum and being a member of the furry fandom i would say it's it's statistically near impossible that there are no car sonas <laughs> especially if there are already plain sonas there are jet sonas jet uh, plane sonas oh, okay and, okay and this is this is basically what we're even getting at here is how much do you want to be uh, relating to a monster versus being the monster itself? 
it, do you view yourself as a monster? Do you feel like society views you as a monster? Maybe you've been raised with good reason to feel that way. I certainly have. When I was kicked out of the closet by my ex, I didn't get to come out on my own terms and I could feel people treating me differently that had known me for years. I hadn't changed. Who I was really hadn't changed at all. However, I was becoming a gay stereotype. I was becoming the gay friend and, mm -hmm. and I, I lacked agency over this whole part of my identity that I hadn't questioned before that much, which is how do people, what image do people have of me? I assumed that if I was as upfront as possible, they would have to have a one-to-one -one because perception, if I was being careful, it would carry it through. And that's not the case. And a person who's marginalized at all, who interfaces with prejudice, they understand this easily. Those kinds of people, if they see a monster, especially one that has, I don't know, any, any traits at all that'd be attractive, like muscles, a xenomorph is ropey, but it has muscles even if it's very ectomorphic. It's easy to see the the sexual charge of a xenomorph design. It has a literal dickhead. Yes, it it's does. Horny. It's super horny. It it it, it, show, it reproduces by throwing some vagina creature to your face. It's 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 terrifyingly horny. I did a video on that. Um, oh yeah. On the xenomorph. Giger's a great example. Yeah, he is. Though you know. A bit too extreme for my taste, Mr. Shenomorph. <laughs> You're scaring me. You know, You're scaring the shit out of me, Mr. Shenomorph, mostly. But okay, you know. So if you're, but yeah, if you're into Xenomorphs and if you're into the Alien franchise, that's a great example of how that is way more furry adjacent than it is furry. You can find plenty of furries that want to be a Xenomorph or fuck a Xenomorph. I have a Xenomorph avatar on VR chat for a reason, and not just because it's good for sign language but because I, I like being in a silly casual context with a character that at one point I was very sexually attracted to, but my voice is coming out of it. It's, the, it's so <laughs> funny to me. I don't sound like a xenomorph at all. Okay, I am and terrified that, of the xenomorph, but I- Even my avatar? What? No, your VC, no, that's, that's very silly. I cannot be terrified of that. I was terrified okay, cool. as a kid. I love xenomorphs now, they're so cool. I hope to get killed by a Xenomorph some, 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 at some point in my life. Actually, when Jeff Bezos went, went out to space, I was like, please, please, this be the, this should be the plot to Alien. Or, you know, Event Horizon at least. Please have him killed by a sexual monster. He, you know, his rocket was shaped like a dick. Uh, it's, it's only fair that he gets killed by a dick monster. Um... Anyway, uh, yeah, I, I, do you I. Think that, do you think Eager wanted to fuck a xenomorph, or he wanted to be the xenomorph? I, I, probably both. Probably, probably I would say both, because it there's many xenomorph concepts, and sometimes it's like a male sort of, you know, so and sometimes it has like a female human sort of face. And I think he wanted to be the male xenomorph banging the female xenomorph. But I don't know. I know in in relation to what you say, I do tend to identify as the monster. Like, more than the whatever. Uh, then again, it's it's always a, a side of the monster that is vulnerable and, and whatever. It's It's just not roaring and chasing people down down a labyrinth uh even though you know i i, I quoted this this story from borges uh, the the house of asterian uh, it's this very very short story it's like literally two pages long and it uh it gives this other complete different vision of the minotaur which is closer to what i personally envisioned in my head canon of mythology as in, well, you know, this creature was left alone, cruelly, on a labyrinth. Well, you know, uh, no wonder he kills people. What the fuck do you expect? Um, there is a quote from a, a 16th century play in Spanish 
which I will now quote in Spanish and attempt to translate. La humana necesidad le obliga a tener crueldad monstruo en su laberinto y yo con mejor instinto tengo menos libertad. So there is this guy, he's trapped in a cell and he says, you know, human necessity shows the monster cruelty on his labyrinth. And even though I am more human, I have less freedom. He's comparing himself to the Minotaur. And, and he does not say that the Minotaur kills for pleasure or because he's a monster. He kills for human necessity. He has learned cruelty through necessity. He does it because he's not given a choice. And this is like in the 16th century. I'm, I'm not even like, or 17th. I don't quite remember the century right now, but it's very fucking old. La vida es sueño. Uh, Life is a dream. That's that's the name of the play. And uh, it, it it has that. It, it has the humanization of the monster. And you can see it all through history. In fact, uh, it's not new to the 20th, 21st century. If you go, you know, way back, you can find uh, several portrayals of uh, traditional monsters as creatures you could sympathize with. There is a particularly beautiful one of the miniature, which I think expresses very well the melancholy of the creature. I think this is early 20th century, late 19th century, but I could be wrong. It shows a minotaur longing, uh, you know, looking through the walls of the labyrinth into the horizon, the labyrinth never ending. And it doesn't look fierce, it doesn't look scary. You know, he looks alone. And, uh, and I saw this as a child and I thought, well, this is, well, this is refreshing. I can identify with this. Uh, I also really, really used to like Casper when I was a kid. The, the film, the 1995 film, uh, which I know it's, it's not very good, but it's about monsters who need friends and, and have wants and, and feel human. And uh, so I, I identified with it. I, I didn't realize this until you said that now. I would never call Casper a monster. I, I think the reason why that surprised me is because I think a monster has to have a level of repulsion in its imagery. And Casper is designed to be cute, and in that iteration, definitely marketable. I'm pretty sure there was a McDonald's milkshake that came out with that. Of milk. course, of course. But, but I, I was a 10-year-old child identifying with a cute character. It, it, it yes. had nothing to do with, with fucking the character. It just had to do with, yes. oh, he's a ghost, but he needs friends. And this resonated with me. Like, everyone's scared of him, but he needs friends. And, you know, when, whenever he meets someone, people are scared of him. But then, you know, he's a gentle ghost and he's cute and whatever. Uh, that's that's the whole concept. I, I never thought about fucking Casper. I, I don't think so. But now we all are. And, oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Please, please that's don't. That's how language works. I didn't choose that. That's okay. How then works. just f that. fuck fuck the ankles. They are adults. I like the one so, with a with a nose like this. So there's that. Yeah. He's cute. He could be this, my type. I this think. reminds me of a slide that I have in a talk that my partner Sasha and I give, or we we've given it a few times about what our character selection in games would say about us or how we can explore our sexuality or our gender safely through artwork mm -hmm. and one of the examples i use starts off with choosing man shep or fem shep in mass effect uh -huh. and 75 percent of players choose the man shep or male shep or whatever i i don't care about mass effect all that much but Femship had a better voice actor, yes. objectively. Yes, More she personable did. facial expressions. Yes, and the general. and the story was written for her. It was written uh, for <laughs> a Femship. Yeah, because because uh, they decided it would pro. You're out of focus. You're back in focus. Uh, they decided that writing for a female character and then have that female character dubbed 
by a male actor would make it uh, more neutral than if it was written as male as probably you know with male heroes we tend to associate like some cocky sort of like video game type character expressions that we would not write into a female and it's much better like like that it's it's just easier to to so go with the female default than a male default it makes sense to me and here here's why i bring this up at all which it it, it isn't to say that it's exactly like teratophilia to choose a female character when you are not female yourself however if you are say a cis male gamer if i can use a potential slur here oh no and gamer you is choose a femshep a yeah. capital g a hard g gamer and if you are choosing femshep there's a certain level of curiosity i think that's required of you a certain level of being not fucking boring i think you have to be interesting on some level to not just pick the guy who's there to for most people to pick him any rpg that has the the human race and then all these different other creatures but they're just like the human race and their attributes are average because they're humans Boring. I don't have many friends who pick that. Yes. I don't, do you, I don't know if that's true for you. I don't have many friends who would who would play like the most boring race in a game anymore. That used to be all I knew back when I was in the Bible Belt, and now most of my friends, they're, you know, they would they would much rather fuck a Turian than fuck a human. That's a just Tory. How it works now. What the fuck is a Tory? The Turians are a Turian. A Turian. Okay, I was thinking like yes. about. Yeah, the true. Tories, the the British Tories, and I, I and I was like, I realized they're not human, but I would I also, rather <laughs> fuck a human than fuck Margaret Thatcher. Uh, that I have to say. Yes. <laughs> I'm not gonna say mean things about her right in this moment. Why not? That she's dead. Fucking... She's dead, and she's rotting. Ding dong! The witch is dead. The wicked witch is dead. I'll say my anything against Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> I don't care. My life has, re- has a clean separation of sex and violence in it for my own necessity. And oh. My first thought was, what's a mean thing I can do to Margaret Thatcher I don't think is a healthy or productive uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, don't say that. Yeah, I was, I was more yeah. thinking about cartoon violence, like, you know, putting her in a cannon and shooting her t- into the moon or, you know, wild E. Coyote stuff, not, not disturbing soul stuff anyway yeah people who would rather fuck a turian they have no asses they 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 just don't have asses i wanted the the you know the the remastered version like just 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 give garris an ass please uh but no still no ass but yeah okay yeah okay i'm 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 not into turians but uh but i can yeah i can do it with garris i like his voice I don't. I don't want to because, know about the shape of his penis, though. I think it's probably going to be scary. Because Garrus is not human, though he is a person. He has personhood and he's intelligent. Then a person who doesn't perceive themselves as gay, and especially perceives themselves as straight, when that's convenient, it will be easier for them to portray any queer feelings and have that safely projected into Garrus. Because you can say, oh, I'm not gay, but I want to fuck Garrus, Wolf O'Donnell, etc. Like any any anthropomorphic non-human being with the clear understanding that it is fantasy. And I think people will be better off if they explore where those interests come from. However, don't be surprised when there are factors outside of just being attracted to a character and it's way separate from anything i would ever want in real life don't that be surprised sounds, if it that isn't sounds separate. pretty gay like i'm just saying if you want to fuck wolf o'donnell maybe you're a bit gay just just slightly but if you don't want to fuck if you're not sexually attracted to any human then at all so far but you're into wolf o'donnell like this is does that this happen is the case of one of my, huh? yeah one of my friends before 
one of my friends before identifying as non-binary and a gender and believing themselves to not even necessarily bi be bisexual. They were attracted to, as they perceived, women exclusively and Wolf O'Donnell over here. <laughs> okay. And, and then that, and the other degrees of separation over there, which we will not talk about. Yeah. It's and, and also Blaziken, for what it's worth. What? Blaze what? Blaziken and Blaziken the Pokemon. It probably has I, its I, own Spanish name. No, no. Fiery chicken. I... I have no idea. Like the last Pokemon I played had a hundred and fifty one, you know. Like yeah, I only played same one I... Pokemon game, and then I played a little bit of Silver. But I got bored halfway and never played Pokemon again. Any any Pokemon I know is because of having to see it in the porn, and then I see the text there, and I'm like, why is why is this character design like this? Oh, it's a Pokemon. Okay, I'm looking at Pokemon. Porn. Yeah, that's why. All they... right. That's... That's what it is. And this is actually something that reminds me of another element of Teratophilia. Oh yeah, by the so way, Nintendo the further... Nintendo did Incineroar completely on purpose. They did. I I know they did. They will never admit to it, but they did. They were like, you know, we're going to make it cute, but with a few minor alterations he can be made fuckable so so let it let us let's just release these and let the fans like flood the internet with porn and i i imagine all of the japanese executives just wanking to pokemon porn you know in their houses while their wives are not watching i'm sure they do bunch of wankers and nintendo also ring fit i've seen the dragon i i've seen that oh, yeah. that ass you're wanking to it you you Japanese executive man, you want everyone to wank to this too. This is the Drago's only good you'll do. Hamburger face is not sexy to me, but I no, but it's I, funny. I, I could see you want to come. But it's funny and I cute. I put paper bag over that hamburger. Huh. It's it's, 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 it's funny. It's cute. It's cute. It's, cute. it's, cute. it's, it's we'll, meant to be cute. <laughs> it's not meant to be so sexy. I, <laughs> so another another element of this I want to mention about teratophilia is when you deviate further and further away from a a like human corporeal form mm -hmm. when it's no longer biped when it and no longer has human gestures then this says something about you that isn't just about your sexuality so in my experience sexual or otherwise if you have a persona that is a quadruped a feral design as we call it in the family, rather than mm -hmm. an anthro design mm -hmm. then what i notice is that this this typically has two main reasons it can happen. One is a relationship to pop culture, like the Lion King. Mm -hmm. And the other would be that you want to be freed from the elements of human society. You want to be in nature. You don't want to be in a place where you are walking on all fours. You want to just have a completely obvious physical shift. Mm -hmm. So... I think also if you had if you had degrees of abstraction from humanness in a design that you were sexually attracted to that would certainly have to mean that you are further and further removed from being conventionally attracted to a person period that's what i would assume and i'm trying to think of good examples i've seen as it relates to teratophilia itself and that nothing's coming up it's hard for me to think of a monster. Oh, actually, Love, Death, and Robots? Yes. Uh, Love, Love, Death, and Robots had this one episode. I, I don't remember it well because I didn't really see the show. But it was this. It was like uh, a fight. Air. It was a cage fight. And a human was controlling a robot or something. And I yeah, think that it was... Yeah, I think that was the, the first one. Sleek. Huh? So... It, it was designed to be sleek and quadruped and bestial, but uh -huh. also I think the kinds of people into this, especially with the cyberpunk influence, they have this ability to, yeah, I would say they have a, an ability to imagine themselves outside of human convention. I think that the people who would be into that character design would also be, they would have a vetted interest in post-humanism. That, that's my expectation. 
All right. Well, I see you've carried the hardness test. I've never. Yes, yes. I thought you know, uh, uh, this. It's been a good recording. I have more than enough, and I would like to conclude with the Harkness test because this is not featured in my video because it's very silly, but I like it. So there is this character in Doctor Who uh, who's called Jack Harkness, and he is a uh, he's we could say he's pansexual in the literal etymological way with pan meaning everything in Greek like yes everything so so um so there's this this sort of jokey thing I'm going to put it on the screen for a minute I'm capturing the whole screen not to get uh so I have to cover you now to put this on screen and I will uh uh, take it off screen now. So, you want to fuck a fictional creature? Give it the Jack Harness test first. So, so does it have human intelligence or greater? This is important. Or else you're maybe abusing, like, some sort of, you know, innocent creature that cannot consent. Can it talk or otherwise communicate with language? Be careful with the body language here. It could be dangerous. Uh, is it of sexual maturity for its species? Uh, if it is, if the answer is yes to the three questions, you can ethically fuck that monster. Do you do you agree with the ethical monster fuckery proposed by the Doctor Who fandom? I I believe I do. I I the, really like the, the illustrated intelligence. The illustrated. Are you an adult? Do you want to fuck? Are you an adult? Certainly. Do you want to fuck? Of course. Of course. This is. So the, the footnotes here says yes. Body language is a dangerous road. As always, err on the side of caution. Only rely on body language if both parties have attempted communication through different means and failed due to language barrier, barriers and other special situations. Yes. Please be so, sure yeah, that, yes. that it is not. It is not posing like that, cause cause it, it's hind legs were like that. Those are the hind legs it was born of. With you, you do not have the permission to fuck those hind legs. That is not a sexually provocative and, pose in their species. And here's here's where this gets nuanced. Uh, from what I've seen, we were talking about Pokemon, for example. Oh yes. Say you're uh, a hound doom. What I've is seen that? that before. It's a. Uh, it's supposed to be like some sort of. Some sort of dog with horns, like oh, I'm a devil dog. Oh, I'm uh -huh. a, I'm a, what's it called? It starts with a C E R three three headed Cerberus. Okay. Okay, it's I'm, like a I'm looking at the at the thingy. Horns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a it's so, a dog with horns. It's a dog. It's a ram seeing, dog. I remember seeing a porn of a solo character that was not Anthro, it's just feral. And I remember thinking, is this, like, I was thinking about the hardness test, what's going on here? And then one of the things that was a clue that it, it would pass the hardness test, I assume, is that it had piercings and makeup and a very obvious facial expression of saying, I may never wear clothes, but I know what I want right now. Okay. And is this bestiality is or is it not? Let's have a because big discussion. So if someone if someone's more comfortable in a shape that's not anthro, personally that, that deviates far too much from what I'm comfortable with and what I'm attracted to. For me, the human parts of furry art are mostly my favorite parts. Yes. I'm just like a body furry. But I, 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 I get why people are into the different things. Well, you know, I don't, I don't particularly care as long as, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't like translate into actual bestiality or something like that. But, you know, it's the yeah. power of imagination. Actually, there's a few things that I only mention passing by in the monster fuckery video. But there is uh, the question that uh, dinosaur porn was really popular with straight women. 
like it became this big thing. And then there's Stalag literature written by Jewish people, people descended from Holocaust survivors, not Holocaust survivors in particular, but people who, you know, their parents were Holocaust survivors, that write this uh, Stalag uh, erotica in which, you know, it's set on the concentration camp and it has really sexy Nazi girls uh, whipping and being sadist to the Jew prisoners. And this uh, actually originated in, in, in Israel and it was uh, pretty successful when it came to erotic literature. So there's some way to deal with generational trauma that actually happened. I am not making this up. This, this, it has a name, yeah. it's called Stalag. And in these cases, we're talking about straight women being into dinosaurs and straight men being into generationally traumatic ideas of sex in Nancy. It's, it's, it's very long to describe, but I already described it. So one does wonder, you know, where actually we think, you know, oh, of course, LGBT people, we are all into all of this shit but there's there's these variations there's also bigfoot porn which was actually uh, pretty popular in the 70s and uh did you see those trending in america those what you heard about this bigfoot porn there's there is a house representative or governor or something and this was like a year or so ago and there was Bigfoot porn that he had downloaded. Okay, that that has so, uh, that has existed for decades. Oh yeah, I, I was looking at that stuff for decades and decades. This is it's not it's not even like it's from the nineteen seventies. They started with this thing, and it was mostly mm -hmm. you know focused as I. No, I'm not sure, but I think it was mostly focused to heterosexual men. And then there was this big search on dinosaur porn that was uh, focused, you know, what ma mainly consumed by straight women. So, hey, straight people, what are you hiding? Because we're showing all of our queer monster fuckery. But, hey, come join the club. Show us your Bigfoot porn. We're waiting to see it. Egyptians had plenty of anthroporn. In well, canon, I don't. Thousands yeah, thousands of years ago. I will. I'm, I'm not sure that was porn. Uh, how about how about Set swallowing Anubis's cum? I know, but that's not porn. It was in the salad. He wanked on the salad. That's that's more like a symbolic thing of having the seed inside of me. More like, wow, this is hot. Oh my god, I want to okay, fuck so this. That this eagle man, this set whatever monster thing you are this, set. This dif this differentiation here, this is something I also try to talk about when we talk about porn versus sexual themes in art. Porn as I understand it, what I think res of illustrates what counts as porn the most objectively, is that porn is a state of mind. So mm -hmm. if you take pornography, even like, think of any random Pokemon porn you've seen on the internet, if you take that Pokemon porn and now it's in the Museum of Modern Art I... and you're looking at it in a crowd, <laughs> oh no, this is not porn anymore. In this moment, you are studying human sexuality in an academic context. Uh -huh. Unless you were, you know, masturbating to it when you thought no one was looking, that would be porn for you, but it's no longer porn when it's displayed in an academic context. Yeah. And it's not designed to be erotic. It's not very sexy while in the moment. Actually, when I was in the Louvre, uh, there's this statue of called Satyr and McCann, which I thought was like super fucking super sexy. And I think that like the whole um, stairs going up to that statue were like the lubricating part before you came and you find the statue. Because it was all full of very mm -hmm. sexually posed statues of beautiful men done by really, really, really gay sculptures like French case. It's, it's the French sculpture place. I assume every French sculpture is gay. Okay, I just assume yeah. it. Fair. You can try to prove me otherwise. I challenge you. 
Uh, and I was just looking at all of these beautiful men before I went into Saturn and Bacan. So it can be. Just, 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 just don't whack on the museum. Just wait till you get home. But take photos. Oh no, this is because I really like. You know, yeah, yeah. I am taking photos because I'm a tourist. I'm, I'm not going to wank to this. No, at any moment, please. But yeah, I, I, I'm waiting for the moment where, where we see Pokemon fucking on the moment museum. The day will arrive. Very important's been in the museum already. Oh, Someone has it? Someone stole furry porn and then used it as an exhibit. Yeah, I can't recall where this was, but oh. I want to say this was in uh, the early half of the 2010s. They stole it? Like it was yep, their they, art? They just like ripped it off the internet and then put it on this display. Oh. Uh. And the reason being that how ostentatious it is that we have these these cartoons of these animal people and look at them they're they're being sexual how how unusual oh oh it, you're so insightful mr artist you went into the internet and you found porn oh my god rule 34 nobody knew about this mr artist oh you're certainly a revolutionary uh well there's been picasso picasso did Pictures of mandatories and ladies. So there's that. It's already been in a museum. So yeah, take that. You, whatever, enemies of, of monster fuckery they are. I'm sure they're all Nazis. Fuck you, Nazis. And, and that's, I think that's, that's a wrap. That. Yeah, I think, I think that's a wrap. You know, it's, fuck you, Nazis. It's, it's like a good, ending you know i think so uh it's been a pleasure to talk about this very interesting topic with you um i'll leave a description to your channel patreon etc in the description blah 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 yada yada we just have to say goodbye just say goodbye and i will stop goodbye, recording everyone. this is weird right i'm still recording Let's let's have a like a a, a a a very uncomfortable pause before I stop recording. Like let's both look really uncomfortable for a moment. And done.